Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, there is a report of a mysterious powder falling from the sky. I know this might uh, be like, what? Um, but I'm going to put up the articles and I'm going to put the links in the description. A few other things I want to talk about other than this too is people across multiple states in the U.S. are reporting a mysterious powder falling from the sky. Uh, I know this seems like something from a movie, but remember, a movie said that there would be a train derailment, and in the same uh, roundabout location, it happened. But a strange powder has been exerbed in the sky, coating cars in three states across the county. It says people on social media reported seeing dust-like substance in the air on cars in Maryland, Northern Virginia, and West Virginia. The strange reports have prompted the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection to investigate the powder. They will work with the state and local agents, agencies to collect and analyze the samples of the substance. Residents in West Virginia, Eastern Panhandle, which is roughly 100 miles west of Washington, D.C., reported seeing the powder in multiple counties late Thursday night. The Maryland Department of Environment said that the powder likely came from Texas and New Mexico. Now, that would be a huge far away place. I mean, that would be a wind shift, which there has been some heavy wind the past few days. It says, but they said a wind shift has since brought clean air from Canada. Monitoring systems recorded good air quality on Friday. The agency said dust from the storm in the two southwestern states traveled east through Ohio, Michigan, Kentucky on Thursday. Satellite images captured the National Oceanic and a a Atmospheric um, Association reportedly showed. Um, they're saying that this recent dust storm in the Midwest could have caused this, but he said that the Northern Panhandles hasn't had any air quality problems since the toxic train crash on February the 3rd. It has been almost a month since the cargo train carrying hazardous materials such as vinyl chloride derailed in eastern Palestine, Ohio. Um, this is weird, but nevertheless, it's something that is um, been reported. Um, there's a video where they've been talking about there's been this mysterious uh, right here, as you see on the car, um, this mysterious dust like powder that is all over the types of these cars. So what is it that we're seeing with this? Um, is it to be alarmed? Uh, possibly. Uh, we don't know. Um, they're going to go through investigating this, but nevertheless, um, we're seeing this developing. Now, <clears throat> before I go any further with this, I know that NASA means deception in Hebrew, but I also know that the Bible says to watch out for signs in the sun and in the sky and in the stars. And with all the moon activity and comets and stuff that we've been having I always say take things like this with a grain of salt, but I do believe with the electrical grid we got, we should be uh, alert that uh, power outages could happen. Uh, the sun is entering mode of, uh, what they're saying, its most active cycle in decades. And um, I know people in some of the areas, people constantly say, I don't believe it. Uh, like what a few months back when they said that it was entering a big cycle and watch out for California. I have subscribers in California that were going through power surges at that time, the exact time that it was happening. So this is something to keep eyes on that power uh, outages could happen. The link will be in the description. I'm not going to go real deep into this. Um, I always say take it with a grain of salt because NASA is um, means deception in, in the Hebrew, but nevertheless, I do trust in times news. Uh, there's, uh, the things I don't, I don't bring up, but they do do a lot of digging, digging in and checking, um, multiple sources before they go at it. Now we are going to talk about this because train derailments are now starting in other countries. Uh, at least 36 dead and dozen more injured in a train derailment that happened in Greece. Uh, this is becoming 
I mean, train derailments are not uncommon, but the magnitude of them that is happening worldwide now, now we got to say worldwide, it's becoming almost like this is a trend of something that's going on. Um, it was a head-on collision. So this here, um, the train system should know that two trains were on the same track going opposite directions, which would cause a head-on collision, but it didn't. Um, so was it staged? Very possibly. Um, it wouldn't, um, you know, surprise me. But the impact of the collision left passengers on, on the train's restaurant car on the top of two other cars. A blaze broke out in the carriage and temperatures reached as high as 1,300 degrees Celsius, which is 2,372 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it difficult to identify the people inside. Uh, so it was a really big blaze at the speeds they travel and they hit head on. Um, it was something definitely had been going on with this. But uh, before I get into that uh, one I just clicked on, I've been saying this left and right that um, archaeology finds have been on the increase in the past year and a half in Israel. And this 2005-year-old um, inscription bearing the name of the uh, biblical king Asher, uh, uh, um, um, ah, I forgot how to say his name. I've done the Bible, uh, the book of Esther uh, Bible study before. Ahasuerus. There we go. King Ahasuerus. Uh, they found this. Now, this is in the biblical timeline of Esther that they found this um, artifact here. Uh, the link can be in the description for people to read. But as we know, uh, this is around King Darius's timeline. And it is um, a really interesting find because knowledge increases when we find more of the ancient biblical times. We learn more of aspects that went on that can help us with our further studies of the Bible and knowing how life was in those days. This is another one of those interesting finds. But on to the increasing um, things that are happening over here. This is a report per March 1st from Israel 365 News that Palestinians in Lebanon being paid by Russia to fight in Ukraine. So we're seeing now that it looks like they're digging into finding other people to help. I'll read this. It's very short and sweet. The link can be in the description too, but it's literally this paragraph here. Palestinians living in Lebanon are being paid $350 per month by Russia to fight on its behalf in the war in Ukraine, according to the media line. Now, citing a Lebanese government source, the report said that most of those enlisting were born after 1969. They're relatively, um, they're, they're not picking younger people. Now, it says this is because Beirut restricts them from obtaining official registration documents, they are considered perpetual refugees, thereby making it easier for them to travel to fight as mercenaries. The majority are being deployed to Ukraine are from the, um, however you say this word right here, the largest Palestinian refuge camp in Lebanon, just uh, located just south of the port city in Sidon, according to the report. Some 200,000 Palestinian descendants of those who fled Israel during the 1948 war currently live in Lebanon and are considered refugees, according to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. So, uh, now it says down here, it says that the Lebanese source said that the recruitment of Palestinians and others is being carried out by the activists affiliated with the Palestinian di diplomatic mission in Beirut in coordination with the Iranian-backed Hezbollah terror organization. We hear of Hezbollah a lot with the attacks that are happening, the terror attacks in Israel. And of course, we know Iran is trying to uh, join side by side with Russia. So these are Iranian-backed Hezbollah terror organizations that are now stepping into this. It says some 300 Palestinians in Lebanon have already completed rapid training in Russia and have been deployed in the front line in Ukraine. So I know it's not a big number, but it is 300 mercenaries that they have um, since uh, brought into here. This was one of the most key aspects that I wanted to bring up here is that there is. Um, this mysterious powder 
that's falling from the sky. Uh, I don't know how big of an alarm this is, but with everything going on, um, if you live in these areas, definitely report it that you're finding this stuff. But this is not normal um, to have powder falling out of the sky. That's almost like um, when you have fallout from nuclear fallout. So is it something we might see more of? I mean, by all means, if we keep on getting uh, this many trained derailments and chemicals burned around, we could start seeing a fallout like this everywhere. So I would say just from gauging it, um, not, not knowing that it's related to like a fallout type of thing. Um, I'm by no means, I'm no expert, but I know that, uh, through areas that have had, uh, heavy bombing, and in a Chernobyl area as well, they had fallout and there was type of powdery substance that comes down from that. And these are around the locations of Eastern Palestine and the way that the wind has been blowing really heavy the past few days, blowing that direction possibly could be a fallout. Um, they probably will not tell us. They'll probably say it's okay. Nothing to see here. Like they've been saying, but nevertheless, this is a mysterious powder and if you live in these areas, be alert about it. Uh, if you live anywhere, be alert about it. It could, um, the way things are happening, I mean, here in Indiana, I'm seeing a lot of people report that Michigan and Texas, uh, they had declined having these materials sent from Eastern Palestine, Ohio, but nobody's really talking about Indiana. They're trying to ship some hundred truckloads here, and our governor didn't know about it, and our governor out of nowhere said, I don't want it here, but they're fighting him on it. They're trying to send a hundred of those truckloads here to Indiana in Heritage um, uh, resource facility that's in Putnam County, right next to one of the largest lakes in Indiana and uh, largest river systems in Indiana. So it's like, why would they want to take these right to that location? Uh, there is a military base around that location too. So I, I, I just, I don't trust it. There's a lot of them people that water's protected over there. That is their drinking water. I used to have as a kid grow up, we had a little vacation home as a kid growing up down there and all the water from Putnam County comes from Raccoon Lake. It comes from those areas. So with them trying to take a hundred truckloads of this material there, that's not really being reported much in there. Uh, it's, it, it, it's alarming, but, um, definitely it was alarming when I'd seen this pop up that people across multiple states are saying they're seeing a mysterious powder coming out of the sky. This kind of relates to me like a fallout type of activity. Uh, you know, God doesn't rain down powder. Uh, it, it's either rain, hail, or snow. This isn't snow that's coming down. This is a powdery substance. So um, much love to you all. Tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be doing the book of Matthew chapter 10. Uh, join in with us to fellowship together in the Word of God, which is the most important thing in our lives. Jesus is the only way to the Father, and we have to come to Him, and the Holy Spirit will put us into uh, repentance once we come to Him. The Holy Spirit will uh, enlighten us with what we need to do out of our lives and what we need to do more in Christ. So may God bless you all. Keep your heads up.